An all-time beauty of the game, we're looking at Alabama versus North Carolina. This was an absolutely tremendous game. Alabama played great. I thought UNC played really good. I think Alabama is one of the more underestimated teams in the whole tournament. We're going to look at two concepts that I love from Nate Oates. This is what separates Nate Oates from regular high-level coaches from being just... I, I literally think he's the best coach in the game or at minimum top three coach in the game. He understands it. He follows logic to an extreme practicality, which I absolutely love. Boom, drive happens. As this drive happens, where did number 24 come from? Number 24 is guarding the ball, okay? He is wasn't guarding the ball a moment ago. A moment ago, he was guarding this player right here, okay? What Alabama is saying is that this is a 25, 28, 30% shooter, something along those lines, something where their value goes down if they shoot this ball. We talked about this with Clemson and, Alabama, or Clemson and Arizona yesterday. I'm currently watching NC State and Marquette right now, which I promise you I'm going to make a video on because it's driving me freaking crazy. 24 says, shoot the ball, this uh, other 24. Shoot the ball, this North Carolina non-shooter. We are going to let you. We have lived essentially that same practicality all throughout the game, and we're not going to change just because it's a one-point game with one minute left. That's what I love about NATOs. A lot of coaches feel pressured in this situation to say, no, stay home. We can't give up a stupid 3-24 to where it looks like we're not playing defense. Said, nope, close short. Sure, we can get a hand up as he rises. That's fine. But we're going to live with him shooting that ball, and he misses it. Sometimes, does he make this shot? 100%. Sometimes he makes a shot, and every person online is saying, like, oh, what the hell was Nate Oates thinking? Giving up a wide open shot when you're down one. Doesn't make any sense. He's crazy. However, the logic and the math says that that's a less efficient shot because that player can't shoot the ball. So that was 100% the right play in that moment and situation, and I absolutely love it from Nate Oates. Okay, play goes on. It continues. Alabama now has the lead up by two with 7.6 seconds. If he makes one, they're going to be up by three. Now, all the time, you hear coaches you hear coaches and analysts say that you need to just simply get the first good look you can, take it out of the rim, it doesn't matter. This is 100% wrong, in my humble opinion. Well, I misspoke. Did I say up by three? I meant up by four. When you're down by four, in order to give yourself any kind of chance in this situation, you have to shoot the first semi-open three you get. Otherwise, there is simply not enough time on the game clock. This same logic applies where there's 24 seconds, seven seconds, or somewhere in between. The same logic applies. To give yourself the maximum opportunity to win, you need to shoot the ball way right here. You need to pull up and you need to shoot that ball. Okay? The reason is, if you happen to make it, which I mean, it's a tough shot. You're probably not gonna make it, frankly. But if you make it, you still have four seconds on the clock. Okay? Let's say you get an automatic two points. You get, no matter what, you make the shot. Best case scenario, you have two seconds, 2.5 seconds on the clock. The difference is you at least give yourself a chance to win if you have four seconds on the clock with a foul and a heave. But if you have two seconds on the clock, you have no chance to win. Even a quick steal doesn't really get you a layup unless they literally throw it to you as you're going up in the shooting motion. Okay, so we see this shot made. Congrats, North Carolina got within two. You don't get any extra points for that, believe it or not. And with 1.2 seconds left, Alabama runs a little inbounds. Doesn't matter essentially what they run. They take advantage of the switches. They get the ball to an open shooter. 0.6 comes off the clock. Okay, That's going to happen no matter what. You're always going to have 0.6 comes off the clock. So according to the strategy that North Carolina wants, your goal right now is to have a missed shot that you can heave, something like that. Okay? And you have a chance to win it. Okay, oh, he missed the first one. You're within two. Even if he makes it, you still can tie it. And he misses it. Hey, okay. oh, 55 had the launch. Okay, let's see. Ball hits right there. Boom, did he get it off? Yeah, he probably got it off. What are the odds of him making that shot? 1%? Less than 1%? 0.02%? 0.01%? Something along those lines. The best case scenario for North Carolina, the way they went with that strategy right there, gave them a 0.05% chance of winning. That seems illogical in my eyes. And I know you could say like, oh, if it's 15 seconds, it makes more sense to get a quick two. No, it still doesn't make any sense. You still essentially need to make it into a two possession game. And the only way to make it into a two possession game is to hit two threes. That's just what you have to do in those late game situations, despite what 
a bunch of people say. Even if he hadn't blocked this, there's no way that's going on. I know there's a lot of people that disagree with that. I would love to hear your thoughts. And or if you just if you agree with it, either way would be fine with me. Hope you have a blessed rest of your day.